Hello and welcome to this A-level medical physics video on MRI which is short for Magnetic Resonance Imaging. We're going to look at the process of MRI and the physics behind it which is called NMR or Nuclear Magnetic Resonance and then we're going to look at the actual machine itself that's used to produce the image and the types of images that it produces inside the human body. So the first thing we need to look at is a quantity of subatomic particles such as the proton and the electron. It's the proton we're interested in here. Uh, they have, most of them have a property called spin, just like they have charge and electric mass. It's an inherent property of the particle. Now you can think of it, if you like, as the proton spinning in space. This is a fairly simplistic analogy, but the point is that it gives the proton angular momentum. It's a quantum property related to angular momentum. And for our purposes, the most important thing about spin is that it creates a magnetic field around the particle. So we can see here a diagram of a proton with magnetic field lines coming out of it. And those magnetic field lines are due to the spin of the particle. The shape of the magnetic field is as though there was a tiny bar magnet inside the proton. So you have a pole at one end, which is a north pole, and a pole at the other side of the proton, which is a south pole. So the field lines point away from this end and curve around just like a bar magnet and pointing towards the other end of the proton. Now spin is actually a vector and the direction of the vector is away from the north pole pointing away along the axis of spin from the north pole of the the little proton magnet if you want to call it that. Now there are billions and billions of protons inside your body and so each of these has a spin. Now normally um, this, here's a proton. The spin just points in some sort of random direction. But when you apply an external magnetic field, a strong magnetic field, to the area around the proton, it will align with the magnetic field like that. Here we've given the symbol B0 to the magnetic field, and it points from left to right here. And as you can see, the proton, once it's in this field, the vector will align along the directions of the magnetic field. That's just one proton. Let's have a look at a whole bunch of protons. So here's a collection of protons, and as you can see, random directions spin at the moment. And when you apply the magnetic field, there they go. They align in the direction of the field. But if you look closely, you'll see that some, have, some of them have aligned in the parallel direction, and others have aligned in the anti-parallel direction. So they've fallen into two energy states. The parallel state, where the spin vector points in the same direction as the magnetic field, is a low energy state. And the anti-parallel direction, which is this one here, pointing in the opposite direction to the magnetic field, that's a higher energy state. The parallel state is much more stable than the anti-parallel state. Now, a gravitational analogy to this would be trying to hold a ruler vertically. There are two ways to hold a ruler vertically. You can either grab hold of the end of the ruler and let it dangle below your fingers and that's a fairly stable state. If you disturb it from that state it will swing back towards the equilibrium point. So it's fairly stable. The other way to balance a ruler is on the tip of your finger so that it, it sits up on top of your finger and goes upwards. You can stabilize a ruler like that. In fact, if you're good enough, you can keep it perfectly still. So it's, it's an equilibrium state, but it's an unstable state. It has higher gravitational energy, and when disturbed, it will fall into the lower energy state. Okay, so that's a bit of an analogy of, uh, to, these, to these two energy states here, where we've got the low energy parallel state and the higher energy anti-parallel state. Okay. Now, not only do they align in those two states, the spin vector also precesses around the magnetic field direction. So we can see the nucleus spinning on this little image over here, and this arrow here represents the spin vector. And as you can see, it's not aligning perfectly with the applied magnetic field. It's rotating, the vector is rotating around the magnetic field vector. Now, this effect is called precession. Um, and we say that the protons are precessing, or they precess, around the direction of the external magnetic field. Okay, now there's an analogy for this as well, um, which I present here. This is an, oops, sorry, we went forward two slides at once there. Um, another thing that precesses are gyroscopes, and here's a picture of a, a gravitational precession of a gyroscope. So you can see that the gravitational field lines point vertically downwards through this page because it's sitting on a flat table presumably 
um, and it's spinning and that spin makes it precess because it's not perfectly aligned it will precess around the in this case the gravitational field lines um, so that's a gravitational large-scale analogy of what's happening to the spinning nuclei in your body when they're aligned in the magnetic field precession so they process at a certain angular frequency which is given the symbol omega naught that frequency is called the Lama frequency and omega naught depends on two things it depends on gamma here which is called the gyromagnetic ratio and the strength of the external magnetic field B naught so the gyromagnetic ratio is a constant for any particular particle with spin and for protons it has this value down here 2.68 times 10 to the 8 radians per second per tesla so B naught is measured in tesla and omega naught is measured in radians per second. So we've got the Lama frequency here being equal to the gyromagnetic ratio times the external magnetic field strength. Now magnetic field strengths in MRI machines are typically around 1 to 2 tesla. So the quantity B naught here is a roughly unity and so the angular frequency or the Lama frequency is roughly the same as the gyromagnetic ratio and you can see that it's very very high. Okay. Uh, we're talking about hundreds of millions of radians per second. So that's the Lama frequency, but sometimes we don't want to measure angular frequency. We want to measure frequency in hertz. So in order to convert angular frequency into frequency, we have to divide by 2 pi because omega equals 2 pi f, if you remember from earlier A-level work. So the frequency of precession measured in hertz is the angular frequency or the Lama frequency which is gamma times B naught divided by the 2 pi which comes from this 2 pi f up here. So that's the precession frequency and obviously it again depends on the germ magnetic ratio so we're talking about the individual particles and the magnetic field strength. So effectively if you alter the magnetic field strength you are going to alter the frequency of precession. Alright so we've got all these nuclei in the body we've aligned them up with a magnetic field and they are processing around the magnetic field direction with this particular frequency which is a few hundred million hertz a few hundred megahertz and what we do then is we make them resonate so what we're talking about now is the R in MRI the resonance bit we apply a pulse of electromagnetic radiation from the machine into the body and we make sure that the frequency of the pulse exactly matches the frequency of precession and because it's a couple of hundred megahertz we that's in the radio frequency band of the electromagnetic spectrum so RF here means radio frequency so we apply a radio frequency pulse very short pulse of energy to the body and the protons resonate with that energy so they, the protons absorb the energy and the ones in the lower energy state um, flip to the higher energy state so effectively the ones that are lying parallel with the magnetic field do what's called a, or undergo what's called a phase transition and they will flip into the higher energy state to become anti-parallel and the energy to do that comes from the photons in the RF pulse. Not only that, a crucial part of this is that they start to process in phase with each other which means they're all at the same part of the circle of precession, if you like, at the same time. So they all start at the top and they go around at the same frequency at the same time. In the same way that when waves come into phase with each other, they have their peaks together and they have their troughs together. So the protons are actually processing in phase, pretty much all of them in the higher energy state. Okay. So here's a little uh, graphic of what's going on. In come the radio photons and the ones in the lower energy state will absorb the energy and flip into the higher energy state and all of them will start precessing in phase with each other inside the magnetic field which is applied across the body. Okay, this process is what forms the signal of the MRI machine. Okay, and uh, let's have a look at that in a bit more detail. Um, we'll come back to that. So here we have the each of these represents one proton, one hydrogen nucleus, spinning in phase with each other. Now the signal from one individual proton is far too small to be picked up outside the body. But if they're all processing in phase, 
that gives us a magnetic signal which is oscillating in this direction which is shown by this little graphic here. So the external magnetic field on this diagram is pointing down the page and if you think about this being split up into a vertical and a horizontal component the vertical component, the tiny vertical components of the spin will be completely swamped by the large magnetic field that we've applied but there is no large magnetic field in the transverse direction okay going across the direction of the magnetic field so the x component if you like the horizontal component of the of the spin vector here the magnetic signal um, can be measured and it can be measured because they're all going in in and out of this you know the, the x component is increasing and then increasing in the other direction at the same time and the sum of all these little protons spinning in, the, in this direction at the same time produces a measurable signal which is quite amazing really so the, M, the MRI machine can pick up one of the components of the magnetic spin from all your protons outside the body so that forms the MRI signal okay all right so what happens when the MRI when, when the pulse is switched off so the, we zap them with energy with radio frequency they process in phase all in the um, anti-parallel state and then one by one they start to lose energy they start to lose energy in two different ways the first way is what you've just seen here I might actually play that again um, the protons will flip back into the lower energy state and at the same time they will give off a radio frequency photon of the same energy that they received when they flipped to the higher energy state so they give off another photon and those come out at random angles and are picked up by the machine the other thing they do is they go out of phase with each other they lose energy to the surrounding molecules and they go out of phase just like if you asked a class of children to walk all in step with each other eventually they would all go out of step with each other because they just get bored and they want to do their own thing in this case they lose their energy to the surrounding um, tissues now these processes are collectively called relaxation so the protons relax back either by flipping back to the lower energy state and releasing the radio photons or dephasing or both so there are two types of radio of, of, re, of relaxation now the thing that gives you contrast on an MRI image is the fact that different tissues relax at different rates and MRI is very very good for uh, detail in soft tissue contrast and contrast in, in different types of body structure so the computer in the MRI machine will actually measure the time it takes for that signal to die away and that will give you an indication of the tissue type and give you contrast now the three things you need to know in terms of the A-level, if you're watching this for A-level purposes, is that watery tissues have long relaxation times and fatty tissues have short relaxation times and tumours tend to have relaxation times somewhere in the middle. The actual mechanism of, of, uh, of relaxation is some, somewhat like this, a little bit like an exponential. Okay, so the two types of relaxation are often called T1 relaxation and T2 relaxation. Now the T1 relaxation time is sometimes called spin lattice as well. Um, this is where the um, nuclei flip back to the low energy state. And the energy from that is given off as photons and given to the surrounding lattice around, around the protons itself. The T2, sometimes called the spin-spin relaxation time, is where the um, the nuclei dephase, so they, they go out of phase with each other. Um, this energy is then sometimes given to other nuclei with spin that pick up the energy after the the protons have, have dephased. Okay, so that's T1 relaxation time and T2 relaxation time. The computer can measure both of these separately and it can produce weighted images for T1, T2 or a combination of both.